Before we wind up, let us summarize this entire discussion. We first understood what is goods sent on approval. Goods sent on approval, very simply speaking, when we sell goods to a customer on approval basis, the customer has a right to reject the goods, reject the sale and return the goods. So when goods are sent on approval, it is not actually sales. Those goods still belong to us. We have not transferred ownership of the goods. The stock lying with the customer is our closing stock. When does a customer, when is sale actually effected? When the customer intimates his approval, tells us he approves of the goods or the specified period within which he should have returned the goods is over and he has not returned the goods or he indicates by using the goods in some way indicates that he has approved of the sale. Usually, what is the objective of this? We sell goods on approval basis to improve sales, to increase the market share or to introduce a new product. How are the accounting records maintained? Accounting records are maintained depending on the degree of control we require. Therefore, it is based on the frequency of the transactions. If we have only one, two transactions a month of goods sold on approval, we do not keep any separate set of books. However, if we have more transactions, such transactions are more frequent, then we do keep a separate set of books. Therefore, based on the degree of control required, which again is based on the frequency of the transactions, we have a system of bookkeeping of three kinds. One is when sales are casual, in which case it is simply treated as an ordinary sale and any return of goods is recorded as a sale return. There is no separate set of books. When such transactions are more frequent, for around 5 or so in a month, we keep a separate journal, a sale or return journal, which has four columns, a goods sent on approval column, a goods returned column, a goods approved column, and a balance which is nothing but goods sent on approval, less goods returned, less goods approved. This balance is actually represents the stock lying with the customer, our stock lying with the customer, but at selling price. In addition to this, a sale or return ledger may be kept when goods are sold frequently. This consists of two kinds of accounts, the customer's accounts and the total sale or return account. When transactions are very many, numerous, again we have two books, the sale or return day book and the sold and returned day book. Basically, the goods sent on approval column of the earlier method is what is recorded in the sales or return day book. Whereas when goods were returned and goods are approved, there were two other columns in this day book. The same two columns are represented in a separate book called the sold and return day book, which has two columns. These details are then posted into a sale or return ledger which again has two accounts, the total sale or return account and individual customers accounts. As I said before, this ledger may or may not be maintained when goods are sold frequently.
Thus, if greater control needs to be maintained about the goods lying with the customers on the related debtors on the goods sent on approval basis, we have an elaborate system of a sales or return day book, a sold and return day book, again, and a sale or return ledger. But it is to be noted that these day books and these ledgers are all memorandum books and do not form a part of the main books of account. With this, we conclude this session. Thank you.